What's going on everybody? Chris from Out West with Chris. Today, something a little bit different. I'm gonna be talking. Now that's not different. I know, I talk a lot, right? Um, but this is gonna be one of those videos where I pretty much just discuss a topic. So if you don't like that, don't click the thumbs down, just don't watch the video. It's cool, it's okay. You don't have to. Today what we're gonna be talking about is the impact and some negative impacts, I think, that social media can have on fishing and hunting and kind of the outdoor industry in general. So a little background. When I was at SHOT Show, many of you know I went to SHOT Show, um, I came across an article. SHOT Show puts out a magazine on a daily basis. It's the SHOT Daily. Um, and these are great to read on your shuttle bus ride over to the convention center from your hotel. Um, well, I did that one day. I picked one of these up right here and I read this article right here. This was an interview with uh, the CEO of a, a company. Um, his name is Dusty Zendel. And he's the CEO of a, a company called Signature Product Groups. I have no clue really about what they do. Um, he explains it a little bit, but that's besides the point. The thing that really stuck with me was something he said in response to a question. The question from the people writing the article was, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the industry in the next five years? Now he goes through some stuff like the decline of brick and mortar stores, which is a huge issue. But more than that, he, he goes into something. I'm just going to read this to you and then I'm going to expand on it with my thoughts. He says, I also worry about hunting and the outdoor lifestyle decreasing in some ways. We are losing some of the core values that we grew up with, where hunts were based around making memories. He goes on to expand on that a little bit by saying there is a social media threat to our industry. When I was a kid, if someone shot a mature four point mule deer, it was a really big deal. And that's the truth, right? And if you were fortunate enough to lay hands on it, it was thrilling. When hunts started being filmed, people really started to see what was out in the woods. Outdoor television shows soon followed. It's become an everyday occurrence to see incredible animals being harvested. You can hardly pick up your phone without seeing a true trophy animal that's been shot somewhere across the world. It's desensitized us all to what the sport is really about. It's a real threat to be judging one's hunting prowess by the size of their harvest. I remember the first deer I killed, a simple spike, yet today, it is still my favorite hunt. So that kind of sent chills up my spine reading that, you know what I mean? Like his, one of his best memories was getting his first deer, which was a, a spike. Some of my best hunting memories came on trips where we didn't harvest an animal. Last year, my, my most recent memory, we had a great trip. I mean, it was crazy weather with all that snow. We didn't harvest an animal. And I think there's some danger to what kids or young people um, take in because, you know, young people, they have a tendency to measure themselves against what they see out there, right? And, and uh, they always are seeing these huge bass, right? They're always seeing big trophy fish. They're always seeing deer with these amazing antlers, just huge animals. And I think it, it, it's true, it's desensitized us as sportsmen, and especially the younger generation of sportsmen, to what it's actually all about, what it's like. You know, I put in a lot of time out of my kayak to catch the fish I catch. The kids don't see that. You guys don't see that time that I put in. And the danger here is tricky. There's a lot of things that are really at stake. For example, here in California, the amount of people buying fishing licenses is decreasing. Um, you would think that as a population grows, so would the amount of licenses purchased. But there's a lack of kind of desire to get out there, um, that type of thing. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's a good thing. The, the waters will be less crowded and yada, yada, yada. Well, okay, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe the waters will be less crowded, but there are some negative impacts to those, um, to that decline in license purchases. There have been way less trout plants um, in California 
over the last two years, there's been a huge decline in trout plants. And a lot of that is because the funding just isn't there because all of those trout plants are paid for by your license purchase, here in California anyways. The other issue is, as the number of people that are you know, getting fishing licenses and hunting licenses and that type of thing decreases, the cost per license has to go up. Um, you know, there are these bureaucracies that we've built for better or for worse that manage um, you know, the fisheries and the hunting grounds and you know, that type of stuff. And those bu bureaucracies probably waste some money, but they, they do fill a need, right? We need game wardens, we need fish plants, sort of. Um, we need regulation, we need healthy fisheries, so we need studies, you know, just all of those things you know, all of it plays a role when the number of people that are getting licenses goes down to offset the cost, something's got to happen, okay? They're not going to pull it out of a general fund. They're going to increase the license cost for the actual guys that are out there doing it. So there's that. The other thing that happens in that I can see now happening in California is when a population of a state, okay, or an area, um, the amount of people that are active in the outdoors, whether it's hunting or fishing or just, you know, taking in the outdoors in general, when that starts to decline, the, their voice is almost lost. So when a law gets proposed in the, your state assembly, if there aren't as many people that are hunters or fishermen um, out there to, to vocalize and oppose that law, that law gets pushed through a lot easier. Now, if you come from an area that there's a huge hunting and fishing um, culture, then that's probably not something you've noticed. But out here in California, it is something that is noticed frequently. When there's less people out there doing it, there's less interest in keeping those of us who do it happy. So what's the root of the problem? Well, I think part of it is the generation that's coming up, okay? I know it's easy to point a finger at the generation that's coming up behind you or a couple behind you and say, you know, you got to put down those video games and go fishing. Well, okay, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? Maybe they do. They, kids do need to get outside more. You know, I try to take my kids fishing. Um, we go camping all the time and, and stuff like that. But it's because I lead an outdoor lifestyle and I'm trying to inspire them to do so too. But I think some of it is social media. And in the article, Dusty touches on that by saying the threat of social media and media in general, that when a guy like me goes out and harvests like a, a, a spike or a fork and horn or something like that, that it's less than a good thing. You know what I mean? Actually, those younger animals taste pretty damn good. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a good thing sometimes. But social media just throws out these animals that are just huge, right? And you're like, wow, I'm an inadequate hunter, you know? But what they don't tell you is that a, it was a guided hunt. B, it was on a private ranch where those herds are managed for trophy bulls, right? Um, all of that stuff. Like when I go out with my brother-in-law, my dad, and my brother-in-law's dad, and soon our boys, we're going out. It's a public land, do-it-yourself hunt. We don't have a guide. Um, we know the land because we've been doing it out there at that spot since I was 12, okay? So 25 freaking years going out there, grinding, learning the land, learning the animals, and, you know, taking the shots we get. And if we get a shot at a spike, we take the damn shot. If we get a shot at a five point, we take the damn shot. We're not out there trophy hunting. We're out there to fill a tag to put meat in the freezer. And I think that that generation of putting the meat in the freezer, it's kind of slipping away from us. And now I'm going to switch over to fishermen. Fishing YouTube channels, Instagrammers, Fishagrammers, whatever you want to call them. You know, I think that some of us, and myself included, we do um, a disservice to those that take in our content. And I say that because nine times out of ten, people don't see the bad days. And I don't show the days that I go out and get skunked. You guys don't see that. When I go out for an eight-hour day, and I catch two fish, you see me do some stuff and catch two fish. In the past, there are days that I haven't even uploaded those videos where I catch two fish. You know, I'll save my editing energy for days that I catch 
five or six fish. Now more recently, since having read this article, I've kind of felt like, you know what? It's probably good for me to show the days that are a struggle and to talk about those days because when I catch that one fish, it, it, it's a bigger payoff. When it's a struggle out there and you catch a nice fish and it's the only fish you caught that day, there's a huge payoff. And I think there's, there's a lesson that people, especially young people watching, can learn. And that lesson is sometimes it's not 20, 30, 40 fish days. Sometimes it's not five fish days. Sometimes it's one bite days and you gotta capitalize on that one or two bites that you're gonna get. And part of the reason why I haven't uploaded some of those rough days before is because I just haven't been able to make them interesting. And I don't wanna upload a video that's boring, but that's not anybody's fault but my own. It's my job to make interesting content. So I think that recently, now give me your feedback, I think that recently I've done a better job. Um, there was a day I went out um, to Lake Hennessy and I think I made that three fish day a little bit interesting. There was a day that I went out with Yankee Tankers Outdoors and Bet, my buddy Bet, and we fished and it was the day that the wind got super crazy. I think that I made that two fish day a little bit interesting, that video. I think it was okay. I had fun editing that video and I think that that's you know, my responsibility in a way as an outdoorsman, as a fisherman, is to take some of those rough days, make the content interesting, um, just so I'm not uploading my, my freaking epic days that I have, right? And I have the benefit, like you might have seen at the Valentine's Day video that I just uploaded last week, of fishing an amazing fishery. You know, there's a lot of people who watch my videos that don't get to fish in the fisheries that I do. And I think that you know, maybe I take it for granted. There are folks out there that fish up in the, the Midwest and, you know, New England. You know, some of you dudes out there in New England, you know, where you just don't come across a five pound bass that often. The fact that I haven't caught a bass bigger than seven pounds, that's my PB, is a little bit odd, basically, because of where I can fish. What I'm trying to get at is there are a few channels out there that I think do this extremely well. Um, I think my buddy Matt from Yankee Tinker Outdoors, he's pretty honest about his fishing. You know what I mean? When he's struggling, he'll tell you, hey, dude, I'm struggling out here. Um, he catches a fish. He's just like, thank God. You know what I mean? I caught a fish. I don't got the skunk, you know? Um, and Matt's a good fisherman. Don't get me wrong at all. And then there's a channel called Realistic Fishing, and he's got a pretty cool channel. Um, quite a few subscribers, and I think it's because he... He just goes out and he does it, like, and he posts a video, and if it's catching sunfish or, or whatever it is, like, you can just tell he's out there, he's making a video, he's having a good time. And he's, it's, his motto is, no shit, right? And, like, you don't see it, you don't see any BS from that dude. And uh, I don't know, maybe that gives me something to aspire to. The other thing that I think is kind of interesting, or not really interesting, kind of lame actually, is Instagram. Like I look at Instagram, and anymore, you know, you see these dudes holding up these fish, and I'm like, okay, how big are his fingers? Trying to put his fingers to scale with his body. Because it's not that hard to make a fish look really big. You know, like I'm doing with this sock right here. This is a clean sock, by the way. You can hold the fish right here and it can be next to your body or you can hold it like this or you can tuck your fingers in and stick that thing way out there and it can look ginormous. You could turn one of those three pound bass into a five pound bass like that. And then you add a GoPro into the mix that gives you that awesome wide angle and you get these dudes sitting on their boats just doing this with eight fish in their hands, um, you know, and they look like they just got a 80 pound bag, right? I mean, come on now, I don't know. And you know what, it's something that I'm guilty of too, but I'm also the first one to post a, a fish of a bluegill I caught when I was bass fishing. I can't catch a bass to save my life, but shoot, I catch a bluegill today, right? Or the little tiny fish that I catch. When I take my kids fishing, I make a big 
deal about it when they catch a fish. And I'm not the everybody gets a trophy type of parent. I'm like the farthest thing from that, right? But I don't want my kids growing up thinking unless they catch a 24 inch trout or a five pound bass or shoot a trophy class mule deer that their hunt or their fishing trip was a failure. That's not what it's about. It's about being out there, being in nature, having fun, being with family and making memories. That's what it truly is about. And social media is not going away, right? Instagram's not going away. Fish pics aren't going away. Videos aren't going away. And I think until those of us that create content can, can get that message out there that it's not about all of that stuff, it's about making the memories, you can probably expect to see license purchases and just interest in the industry decline. And to me, that's a crying shame. So in 2018, I'm gonna keep doing what I do, but I'm gonna try my best to make those days that are tough out on the water, interesting, fun, and make it more about making memories, whether it's out with my friends, um, memories with you guys, my subscribers, or out making memories with my kids and my family. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. If you have a channel, really kind of think about that. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And if you don't have a channel, let me know what you think about that too. Are you out there with your kids, you know, just celebrating your time together? Are you really honing in on what's important? And dads out there, take your kids out there, man. Take them fishing, take them hunting, get them into it. Um, you know, our sport, our culture, our way of life, kind of depends on it. All right guys, if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button right there, got a couple of videos I think you might like. One is my most recent elk hunting camp trip where we skunked, we didn't get an animal. So uh, check that out, it's the real deal. And here is a video YouTube thinks you're gonna like. Thanks for watching and thanks for getting out west with Chris.